It is now time for member statements. The member from Huron-Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to speak to Endangered Species Day, which is, takes place tomorrow, May 15th. It is a day that we can celebrate the vast wildlife that we have in our province. It is also a day to take note the serious problems facing over 217 species at risk here in Ontario. When the Endangered Species Act took effect in 2008, the Blanding Turtle was added to the list. In fact, the UN has designated the Blanding Turtle as a globally endangered animal. Just last month, where the Court, Ontario Court of Appeal ruled the nine industrial wind turbine project planned in Prince Edward County would cause serious and irreversible harm to the Blanding Turtle. It was gratifying to see someone finally standing up to this Liberal government. An article in the Globe and Mail from April 21st this year revealed that three years ago, believe it or not, the Minister of Natural Resources granted this particular wind farm in Hastings, or Prince Edward's Hastings County an overall benefit permit which would allow the company to kill, harm, harass and destroy habitat for those species because it intended to make up for the harm. Speaker, the energy, the Green energy scheme has failed Ontarians, and I can only say, in respect of tomorrow, we can never put the needs of industrial wind turbine companies before our habitat, endangered species, or Ontarians. Endangered Species Day and the Blanding, Blanding Turtle should remind us of that each and every day, all year. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Member Stavis, Member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I'm very pleased to rise today, May 14th, to mark Apraxia Awareness Day. I want to bring awareness to the community about this speech problem in children because it is still little known, very misunderstood, and has a huge impact on kids and families. Childhood apraxia of speech CAS, is a speech disorder that seriously interferes with a child's ability to develop clear speech. CAS makes it difficult or impossible for an affected child to plan the movements of the lips, tongue, jaw, etc. that are needed for speech. Children with CAS generally have a good understanding of language, and they know what they want to say, but have difficulty learning or carrying out the complex movements that underlie speech. Apraxia is one of the most severe of childhood speech and communications disorders. Speech and communication are critical skills for young children to develop. We need to find ways of supporting children with apraxia and their families because speech therapy, the only proven treatment for apraxia, is quite costly and will extend over many years for these children. These children must work and struggle so very hard just to learn a skill, speaking, that comes effortlessly to other children. I want to acknowledge my constituent, Catherine Rupert Desai, for her tireless efforts to improve the lives of Ontario's children struggling with apraxia. Lastly, I want to let Rowan and other children suffering from apraxia know that we care and we support you through your difficult journey. Learn more about apraxia at apraxia-kids.org. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Member Stevens, the member from Etobicoke North. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Salam alaikum and yali madat, Speaker. I offer you these uh, greetings. First of all, not only on behalf of the Premier and indeed all caucus members of our government, but indeed all members of provincial parliament, to the Ismaili community of Canada. Uh, unfortunately, Speaker, uh, we learned the tragic news that there was a, a major attack affecting dozens and dozens of individuals uh, who were murdered in cold blood in Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, I've just gotten off the phone with Mr. Mohammad Dinani, who is the uh, CEO of the Aga Khan Council of Canada, to express on our collective behalf our, uh, our shock, our outrage, but more perhaps importantly, our, our sympathy and our prayers and our pledge to stand firm with the Ismaili community. I have to say, Speaker, that I have personally benefited uh, very recently from attending an, a lecture series on pluralism and harmony and global inclusiveness, which is being held at the Jewel of the Crown in Don Valley East, this architectural masterpiece uh, of the, the Aga Khan Museum and Centre. And it is a uh, deeply tragic and ironic and unsettling that while the lectures themselves are about the kind of the, trying to bring out the very best in us, we still have to confront these types of issues. Mes pensées et mes prières vont aux familles et aux amis des personnes qui ont My prayers go to the family of the people who died. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I, uh, I want to do something a little different today. I want to mention a few words about the PAGE program here at Queen's Park. Um, 
you know, I think uh, it's one thing we really do right here at Queen's Park. Uh, we've run a phenomenal PAGE program, uh, bringing these young men and women, young boys and girls, men and women, grades seven and eight, here to become part of um, part of the legislative process here in, in our great province. It's very. I'm very honoured. In 2012, Mr. Speaker, I had my granddaughter Rachel. Uh, she came and she fell in love with the PAGE program. She still talks to us about this today, and I'm really pleased. That for the last five weeks, I've had my granddaughter Madison with us. She's a, a jewel in our family. We love her to death, and she's done a phenomenal job. Uh, these people, these young men and women, are potentially community leaders tomorrow. Uh, many of them, many of you, I know, right in the building, get involved in uh, in political parties, political activism, because at, at the age of 14, you can get into a membership at, at a political party. I hope it's a Tory party for you folks. <laughs> and uh, I also want to say that uh, I want to thank the, the legislative staff here because there's a beautiful picture downstairs, Mr. Speaker, uh, on the wall of a pa the Page program from about 19. 7, 1907, 1908, and I, and I got a copy of it right here. And I asked the, the staff here if they take a picture very similar uh, with this beer's pro, with this page program. And I'm going to sneak a quick picture of it, to everyone. There's the 2000 and, uh, uh, 1905, and this is like 2015 one. It's available to the pages as well. I just think it's a wonderful program. I'm so pleased you're here. I'm so proud to have had my granddaughter here, and I think it's a real asset to the province of Ontario that we have the page program. Thank you. Further oh, member statements. Give member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. This is National Nursing Week, a week that we honour and celebrate the incredible work done by our nurses. The date was chosen by no accident for this week. It is built around the birthday of Florence Nightingale, a remarkable woman famous for her services during the Crimean War but renowned for her social activism and research into social detriments of health. I had intended to use my time to speak about the nurses and the job they do, but the outcry I have heard from the people of Hamilton Mountain about this government's plan to sell Hydro One demands that I bring their message to this House. Their message is very clear. Do not sell this public vital asset. They know the Hydro One provides income that helps pay for health care. They know that more privatization into our energy sector means even higher energy bills. For many, less food on the table. They know who owns Hydro One, the people of Ontario. They know they have never been asked if they want to sell it. And considering this deep concern for social welfare, I feel confident that Florence Nightingale, were she here today, that she would agree. Do not sell Hydro One. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. And I'm rising today to recognize a tremendous milestone in Davenport. On April 18th, St. Mary of the Angels Catholic School celebrated their centennial anniversary. With Cardinal Thomas Collins on hand, a fantastic celebration was hosted at St. Mary of the Angels Church to commemorate this tremendous milestone. At the event, St. Mary's presented a wonderful video of the school's history throughout the years and also encouraged all attendees to contribute to their time capsule. St. Mary's of the Angels is a wonderful school located just south of Davenport Road on Dufferin Street. St. Mary of the Angels was constructed for the Davenport community, community in 1915. And since then, St. Mary of the Angels has been at the forefront of guiding and educating Davenport's young people. Mr. Speaker, this makes St. Mary's, one, St. Mary's of the Angels one of the oldest Catholic schools in the entire city of Toronto. Reflective of my riding of Davenport, students at St. Mary's of the Angels are from diverse ethnocultural backgrounds. In fact, students from St. Mary's come from around the world. 14% of students were born outside of Canada, and over 63% speak a language other than English at home. Mr. Speaker, I am so proud to represent this fantastic school here at Queen's Park. I would like to recognize all the past and present principals, teachers, and staff for their commitment to students in education. In particular, I would like to thank Principal Manuela Skeda for her leadership in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize a very impressive, young, and very bright constituent from my riding of Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Kaylin Perry, who you've all gotten to know while she has served so dutifully as a legislative page in the Assembly, 
received recognition on May 2nd during the Gray and Simcoe Foresters Rural Canadian Army Cadet Corps 117th Annual Review in Owen Sound. Although I won't have enough time to recognize all of Kaylin's accomplishments, as there are so many, I'd like to mention a few of them. Kaylin has been with the Owen Sound Junior Naturalist since she was seven years old and twice awarded with Camp Kawartha Environmental Leadership. As a girl guide, Kaylin achieved all badges possible in Sparks, Brownies and Guides and received the Lady Baden-Powell Award. No doubt there will be more awards for young Kaylin when she returns to Pathfinders next year. Kaylin is also a founding member of the First Corps Navy League Cadet Corps in Owen Sound and earned awards in Best Dress, Best Department, Perfect Attendance for all four years, Esprit de Corps, Overall Top Cadet. She also achieved top rank of Chief Petty Officer First Class and Company Coxswain. Furthermore, Kaylin holds Lance Corporal rank with the Royal Canadian Army Cadet Corps and was recognized as top first year cadet. Academically, Kaylin is a top notch two and makes honor roll every year. She was speech finalist in grades four to six and semi finalist in grades six regionals. In grade seven, she achieved gold at both school and blue water regional science fairs. In her spare time, Kaylin is a member of the school band and choir and regional track, as well as by serving on the environmental club and volunteering as a kindergarten helper, lunch monitor, office helper, and bus monitor. Kaylin is also a budding ballerina and aspires to study engineering. Mr. Speaker, I invite members to congratulate the spectacular young lady from Chatsworth, Ontario, and to join me in wishing her continued continued success in the future and asking her to keep her eyes and heart on her dreams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Best wishes to all the pages. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stamos, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. It's a, it's a great pleasure as a nurse to rise today in acknowledgement of National Nursing Week. National Nursing Week is from May 11th to 17th and occurs not only alongside the uh, International Nurses' Day, but also Florence Nightingale's birthday on May 12th. This year's Canadian Nurses Association theme, Nurses, With You Every Step of the Way, emphasizes how important nurses are in all of our lives, at every age, in all health situations, for all Canadians. My nursing colleagues in Cambridge Memorial Hospital and indeed across Ontario walk alongside their patients each and every day, providing a supportive hand to those just learning to walk again after a stroke, supporting those trying to adopt healthier lifestyles, and encouraging others who have mental health or addictions issues. Nurses and community CCAC, nurse practitioner-led clinics, help to teach new parents how to care for their babies, demonstrate how to use crutches or wheelchairs, and care for patients nearing the end of their life, sometimes in my community at Lassard House. Nurses dedicate themselves to their profession in a tangible way, touching the lives of patients young and old and from all walks of life. This past April, the Two Rivers Family Health Team in my riding of Cambridge was designated as a best practice spotlight organization by the RNAO. That was a very proud designation. Two Rivers is the first family health team to achieve this designation, and Speaker has implemented various nursing best practice guidelines, ensuring that nurses stand with their patients at each and every stage. Our nurses help and they heal. Thank a nurse today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Celebrating the second anniversary of Ontario's Children and Youth in Care Day, I had the pleasure of attending the first ever 514 Talks this morning, hosted by the Children's Aid Foundation and the Provincial Child and Youth Advocate. Children and Youth in Care Day provides a yearly opportunity to recognize issues facing current and former children and youth in care, reduce stigma, and celebrate their contributions to the province. The creation of this day was based on the recommendations from the 2011 Youth Leaving Care hearings and was realized through a private member's bill put forward by former MPP uh, Minister uh, Teresa Peruzza in 2012 and myself in 2013. In 2014, the Children and Youth in Care Day Act was passed. As a provincial child and youth advocate said, this day will help take children and youth in care out of the shadow. It will confirm their importance to us and, in doing so, allow us to celebrate them and recommit to their well-being. Thank you to all the former and current children and youth in care for sharing your experiences and encouraging us to do better. Thank you to all the organizations and individuals who advocate for children and youth on a daily basis and support these young people. Mr. Speaker, today is one more way 
to show that we value our young people and acknowledge the unique experiences they face, but it also acts as a reminder of our commitment to help to reach their full potential. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. The member from